Hi everyone and welcome to this third free online EOSIO Swiss workshop. The rise of the getaways and the development ecosystem. Three short interviews, three strategic questions with builders in the blockchain ecosystem. This workshop is about two hours. During this workshop, you will be able to ask your question on the right panel side and I will answer you personally after the workshop. The video will be available on YouTube and will include a mind map with all the topics discussed during this workshop. So first I will have Yves Larose, CEO of EOS Nation Block Producer, then Benny Akak, CEO of Liquid Apps, and finally Sebastian van der Lans, CEO of Wordproof. I will address during this workshop the DAPS a Vigor project, Wax Atomic Herb, the NFTs, Wordproof, the timestamping, and the SEO. On the side of the getaways, dapaccount.com, Universal Account, Voice, Social Network, a first glimpse, DWeb, a framework to generate user token, a follow-up and news, DeFi, XNation, follow-up and news. On the side of development ecosystem, I will address the liquid apps middleware, the services, diffuse the APIs, and finally, we will have some end-ons example. One of them, EOS JS plus IPFS plus WAX smart contract, build an IPFS URL with WAX photo resource. So, I hope you will enjoy this workshop and let's go so voice app.voice.com so it's available for the web it's also available for your smartphone android or ios i have put the link in the mind map to to install on your uh, smartphone so for the moment it is in beta okay uh, this beta phase will be until end of this year i think or october and then that will be launched on next year really launched that's mean now we can do what we want we can post we can do all what we want the voice that we earn when we post something we earn something the simple fact to register in the voice, you have already 3,000 voice, okay, available. And after that, when you create a post, you will receive voice in return, so some rewards, okay. So it's still in beta, and it is uh, now we are in a voice seat game phase because we are uh, testing, and when will be, that will be uh, really launched. The, the counter will be reset and that will begin for real. So there will be different uh, reset uh, phase during this beta. Okay. But we don't uh, lose our uh, posts, we don't lose our likes and comments, uh, but we will have the reset of our voice token. With each one, we have a balance of voice. So I will explain you how it works. So, let's say I do a post. First, I will show you. I put a, a title and then I can put images, YouTube video, some embedded code, a tweet and a horizontal separator line. Okay? So, let's say I put an image I put my image, I can click my image and I can decide to put the text around the image and I do something like journalistic, okay? If I want to add another block, I can add a YouTube video, okay? 
I don't will do that. Uh, you can do a quote and you can hyperlink uh, your text to, uh, to a URL. But the next step is to do a preview. Select category, choose a category. The categories are fixed for the moment. You see, you have voice feedback. Voice feedback, if you click that, is because you are doing a post to make a feedback to voice. Okay. Otherwise, you do your post in crypto, in technology, or maybe uh, in business, uh, travel. So you can do publish when you have select a category. I will go back to the edit of my post. And I, I can edit my post. I can save and exit and I have my draft or I discard it. Discard it. Okay. Until here, I would say very easy to understand. Uh, now I want to, to find the people. I want to find Sebastian. That is one of our guests today. Sebastian. And Sebastian has made a post very well done. This one in the category voice feedback. And he has written an article very interesting how to fix the voice editor fast and good uh, to have more adoption of voice, it's clear. Very well done article. And you see, after the article, you have the comment, all the people that have comment. A good like. And I will put a comment. Totally agree. We need a better editor. And experience to formatting. Text, voilà. etc. So I post my comment. When you are on a comment, you are able to copy the link of this comment and send to someone. Copy the link, you have to go somewhere. That would be good to have a socials when you click here that you can send directly to Twitter, to, to, to other social uh, platform. Uh, you can stop following, uh, stop following the, the, the comments. You can do a report if you see that the comment is not uh, uh, following the ground rules of voice about violence, about uh, other uh, things that are not good, you can report or you can reply to this comment. So that's, it's uh, like a forum, like, um, that's interesting. Very interesting. Uh, here you can go to your profile, to the feed, to your voice balance. You can invite a friend, okay? Invite a friend is possible since the 15th August. So if someone need an invite code, depending of the eligibility regarding his country, because the country, Currently, that we speak, we have about 23 countries that will uh, increase. And this list of countries, I have a link. This is in the mind map also. You will be able to know uh, if you are in the country available to have an invite. So if you are in this country, send me a, a message. I will invite you. Okay? I will give you an invite code. And you see... When I have made uh, something, uh, maybe I receive a notification here. I click this bell. <laughs> I just received someone that voice said one of my posts. Interesting. I will click. Okay. I have voice said this post before. Okay. And now this guy is coming. And he has voice said also. And because he has voice said after me, I should have some uh, reward. So I go on my balance. Okay. I just have some pending uh, earning. I collect. 
and that's it. That's a real good news that is using the blockchain. For the moment, that's use a private blockchain because we are in beta. And at the launch, that will use a, a mix between private and public. Now I am with uh, Yves Larose, the CEO of EOS Nation. Thank you, Patrick, for, uh, for having me here today. It's a pleasure to be here with you. My first question that I want to address with you, uh, Yves, it's about um, what is the, the evolution of EOS Nation in the DeFi space? All right. Well, I, that's a that's a good question since we're starting it off right away. So um, I guess what's important to, to to note is that a lot of the products and a lot of the projects that we've been working on from the very beginning, if we go back to, to even two and a half years ago, a lot of them have DeFi components to them. Um, personally, one of the the largest and biggest opportunities I think lies ahead of us within the blockchain space uh, is DeFi in general. Now, whatever shape or form that may take, I think is what we're seeing develop right now, uh, not just in EOS, but in, in other blockchains, where people are starting to leverage the technology behind uh, blockchain, and, and more specifically in our case behind EOS, to facilitate DeFi products or DeFi offerings or the DeFi realm and expand that realm. So the, the role of EOS Nation within the DeFi realm is, is very much like the DeFi realm itself. It's, it's changing day by day. It's expanding by day, day, day by day. What we are capable of doing and what we see our opportunities uh, has significantly changed over the last uh, two years. Mm -hmm. I would say that one of the first DeFi products that we did, which was at scale, uh, was our proxy pool, our mining pool. Uh, essentially, that is uh, um, an on-chain mechanism, an on-chain way to be able to decentralize finance. In, in this case, in Pool's case, it's uh, reverting or I guess distributing the block producer rewards that we obtain back down to the individual level uh, who uh, I guess stake votes in our proxy pool. So I would say that that was one of the first larger scale iterations of projects that, that EOS Nation worked on and that we released into the wild. Uh, since then, we've worked on other projects uh, that have been some, some have been public and some are still in, in the back end being worked on. But some that you might be familiar with, Patrick, for example, are X Nation, uh, where we've created and we've partnered with, with Bancor to create these liquidity pools uh, and to create these, these, I guess, swap functionalities between tokens. Again, decentralizing a lot of that finance, putting it in the user's hands, um, all on chain, no funds are custodian. Yeah. Uh, and that makes a very big difference for, for end users. We essentially just facilitate the entrance into that, that realm, right? Um, and over time, that has even morphed into more recently the launch of Bank War version 2 that just recently, last week uh, launched, which is very much um, uh, a kind of a, uh, an amplification of the prior uh, Bank War tools. And here we're talking amplification because the the logarithmic uh, formulas that are that are powering these uh, contracts and essentially these pools and making these funds available amplify the funds that are within the liquidity pools, effectively lowering the slippage rate, effectively um, tightening the spreads and making the user experience much better. All of that is is really small key components, foundational tools and foundational components for the DeFi realm. And what gets me so excited about this is that I believe that at this point, we do have significant tools laid out so much so that uh, if we were to relate it or, or put it into a metaphor, the foundations of the house are built and they've been built over the last you know, two years or so. The plumbing is now laid, the electrical is now laid. We now have the walls that are standing up. We've got a roof over our heads. We're now at a point where we're seeing not just the EOS ecosystem, but the greater ecosystem starting to paint the walls, starting to put pictures up on the walls. We're starting to see what those pictures might look like. We're starting to see the, the, the shape of what the living room is gonna look like, what the, the kitchen is gonna look like. And that's why I think, look, I believe at this point that we've really hit a tipping point. And EOS Nation, because it's been there from the, the very beginning, it's one of those things when, when you build on, when, when you start building foundational tools, 
it's sexy for the people building them because they, you know, they see the potential and they see the future and, and th there's something sexy about being at the, at the very, very base. But yeah. I believe that at this point, we're at a place where it's not just sexy for us anymore. It's starting to be sexy for everybody else. And that's why I'm so excited for DeFi as a whole in our role within DeFi, not just the products that we've mentioned, but other products that we are working on or that we know that other people are working on, or we know that large enterprises are working on or institutions. Uh, and so I, I do believe that at this point, we're, we're, if not there, we're hitting the tipping point very soon. Um, and EOS, I believe, is going to benefit a lot of that because one point that we haven't touched is really the tech behind EOS. And we're not going to get into it too much, but tech, the EOS, the way it is built, is definitely built to be able to facilitate DeFi. Uh, you onboarded uh, into the bigger project and you just give some words of your uh, implication of you as a CEO and the CTO, shout out to Denis Carrière, mm. is also uh, involved, uh, I think, in this uh, yes. venture. Can you just uh, give a little word on that? Sure. So our involvement with Vigor started months ago. Um, it, it really didn't start formally um, in, in the sense that you, you mentioned that Denis and I were recently uh, voted as official custodians. So we're part of the top 21 custodians, both of us each hold a seat. And so our, our, our involvement formally has really begun in the last, uh, let's say, month or so. But we've been working with the bigger team on liquidity pools now uh, for months. Um, yeah. And really what we've been doing, another product that, that we didn't mention is the swap.sx pools. And essentially we've created pools using the amplified uh, new algorithms to be able to amplify the liquidity pool within stable coins. So stable coins, a stable coin. Um, and the power of that, obviously, when where does that where does Vigor fit in? Well, Vigor has the Vigor token, which is essentially a stable token. You could refer to it, I guess, as BUSD in a way, so that you can get a mental image. Um, uh, we're able to amplify the liquidity of that token, giving token holders uh, a much better experience when uh, when transacting on that token. We started doing that with Swap.sx pools. And then, as you said, more recently, we've been voted uh, on the board of custodians, where we're now directly able to shape the direction and able to offer our expertise in our, in our respective domains um, to the, the bigger project in a very formal fashion. And I think what, what's important to, to realize here is that when I got voted as a bigger custodian, what that represented was really the full backing of the OS Nation. And the other Vigor custodians and the, and the people within the Vigor community know this by now because I've been here for a month or so. What that enabled is Vigor to have access to our marketing team, Vigor to have access to our financial team, Vigor to have access to our legal team, yeah. our network, et cetera, et cetera, right? And so for us, um, it really unlocked, or I guess it really showcased the, the full power behind EOS Nation is now behind Vigor. Uh, and, and that's changed uh, over the last couple of weeks and we're moving along, uh, launch is coming up, there's a lot of, of work being done and the power of Vigor is that it's a DAC and so you get people from all over the place that are contributing their, their competencies, their skill sets to make this happen and so it's a really beautiful thing to see. Essentially my role is not myself, it's the, the organization. So the seat that I represent effectively brings to the table all of EOS Nation's resources. Um, and so I'm, I'm representing as an individual, but the access that Digger has is the whole uh, entity. Uh, and so we're seeing, we're, we're seeing that maybe I'm, I'm one of the first, uh, but definitely not the first. I believe that other people had similar roles, but we're seeing Digger move into, um, into this direction where more and more custodians, I believe, will be, uh, will, will be more and more entities. So obviously somebody has to hold the seat, but that the backing of that person and the resources accessible to that person are no, no longer just that person. And yeah. for, for Vigor, that's so powerful. For any ecosystem and any DAC, that's so powerful because you're able to amplify the effect that you have. Um, and so I personally, Vigor is in a very, very wonderful position. They've done some amazing work over uh, the past year, which has nothing to do with EOS Nation. So we've only recently in the last three or four months uh, joined in, but we do help to be able to leverage what they've done and just bring it to new heights. 
um, if, if you do have significant funds to deploy or you do have an application that requires the level of trust you mentioned, for example, at the settlement layer or at the identity layer, which we, we haven't really touched upon, yeah. the mainnet is the safest solution. The mainnet has showcased time and time again that it does not censor and it will not censor. And that obviously comes with its downsides uh, for those who wanted more of a, a uh, federated approach, but not just, I guess, federated approach, but from a, a, um, a top-down, I guess, governed approach. Yeah. Um, the, the mainnet definitely has showcased that it's going to be there and that your funds are safe. How do you see the EOS mainnet in, at the core of the EOS ecosystem, uh, the role that play the EOS mainnet on the layer um, I would say economical and then societal. Uh, one of the advantages, the clear advantages that, that EOS mainnet has in the direction I believe that we will keep on heading towards is offering more and more liquidity. Um, and that in itself is a huge advantage that we see um, that, that clearly um, it stands out compared to let's say other iterations of, of EOS. The mainnet not only has the most amount of money locked in, uh, which, which in itself is so valuable because it unlocks so many different um, uh, components, but it's also the area that seems to gravitate more and more of that of those growing assets uh, for, for multiple reasons. It's not to take away from any anything else or any other iterations, but the mainnet does carry that weight. And a big part of that, and, and a big part of how this these economical um, or the economics work on the mainnet and why they're so powerful is because it is simply the most trusted um, version and the, the most, and, and I think it was Brandon Bloomer who said it yesterday, in a tweet, it is, is the only version right now that is ready for prime time. Not simply from a performance point of view, which we won't get into, but from an economic point of view as well, from a trust point of view. Um, and that is there for you to be able to expand, explore, that it does not make any preference based on what the trans transaction is or what it contains or who's making it or how many they're making. And I think that, yes, that comes with some, some challenges, but it, it also brings about so much value. And that value is, is definitely trust. And that trust gets translated to economics. And again, going back to then the DeFi, why is that so crucial? Because if you're going to be deploying significant capital on a, on a blockchain, you need to ensure that your funds are going to be safe. And that's really at the base layer of what blockchain is. And EOS, the mainnet, has showcased that it is quite the, the environment to be able to do so. We continue in that direction and it's showcased and we've seen and, and I'm aware of, of multiple partnerships and we're making partnerships ourselves with either large enterprises, with institutional, institu uh, institutional uh, educational institutions or with governments yes. because they recognize the potential of the mainnet as a safe source for whatever it is they're going to do. Now, whatever it is they're going to do doesn't mean that they're going to be deploying capital, but capital can come in the form of data. Data is capital. And if you do not trust that your data is going to be safe, that has a risk to your capital. If, if you have a business or if you have any kind of other um, external or indirect linkages, that data becomes at risk. Therefore, your capital might become at risk. So these partnerships and these, I guess what the mainnet can offer is not just the direct economical um, facets and advantages to its liquidity, but also the indirect advantages with the, the, the trust uh, permission nature at the core of what the, the main it offers, which then offer indirect economic advantages. And we're gonna continue in that direction. And, and as the main it becomes more mature, older, that trust also grows. Um, Bitcoin has that advantage, right? So when we, when we hear Bitcoin is king, one of the big things with Bitcoin is that it's been around now for 11 years. And so you have the sense that it was there yesterday, it's going to be there tomorrow. Way more than let's say in newer projects. But with EOS, we're developing that sense, we're maturing that functionality, and that clearly has economic advantages for the future. Let's talk about this social layer and the EOS mainnet as a role to play, not yet, or maybe later on, for, for example, the social network, uh, plat social platform network like voice, or when we speak also about sense chat, that is, uh, you are in the 
in the process to have your uh, page for uh, SenseChat. Um, we can uh, sign up there. Uh, I will put some link on that. But let's talk about the Yosmenet on the societal. It, it is possible also to, uh, regarding your, um, your, your um, vision on that, uh, what could be the, the possibility for the societal layer, I would say. Again, I think everything relates to each other. Everything is, I mean, there's, there's very little right now that's a standalone yeah. uh, asset or a standalone feature, right? So if we go back to the societal uh, and the, the societal advantages of the main and direction where it's heading, and we, and we use voice as an example, or we use sense as an example, one of the advantages with the mainnet, as I just mentioned with DeFi, which again, there's an overlap, is that trust uh, perspective, right? So these applications are second layer uh, solutions, which means that they run on their own and they're capable of putting in their own terms of service and they're capable of you know, doing their own process on how they want to moderate their own communities and their own, um, their own contracts. And once you, once you have that in, ingrained and then those applications choose to, like I said, many applications are doing this, uh, null the keys, what they're doing is again showcasing to the end user that you can trust that application that even they don't have control over that application changing that contract. And, and when we say, you know, why is that important? Why is it important to not be able to change the contract or, or to be able to have that trust in that entity? Well, it's, it's multifaceted. For one, it's that everything is on chain, it's transparent, right? At, at different degrees. So there might be things that are in a, in a private chain, but you might not care about that. But the components that you do care about, if they are present on, on the mainnet and they are transparent, you're able to track them. And you're able to know that regardless of what happens, who you are, what kind of opinions you might have, or, or what kind of, of, um, of situation that the application can get themselves in the future, that your content, which is, and, and your content is, is so key, right? We go back to the data. Uh, data really is valuable. And so when you say, well, I'm, you know, the main that might just be the settlement layer. Well, if you think about your data as also being an asset of value, that data being settled on the mainnet is your value being settled on the mainnet, whatever that value may be. And your value, Patrick, might be, uh, you know, more than somebody else's, but less than somebody else's. But to you, that data, your content, your voice, uh, and no pun intended, is worth something. And protecting that and having that uh, not in the hands of a centralized organization or not in the hands of a for-profit organization uh, is crucial. It really is, uh, I believe, for our society, uh, a very big leap forward in terms of, of being able to open up uh, realms that currently are not possible on the, let's say, call it Internet 2.0. Um, and a big part of that is simply because you're leveraging the blockchain uh, technology. Now, where you lie within that technology, so your second layer application, let's say we talk about voice or sans, which component of it is going to be settled on the mainnet? That's where you as an end user can then choose which, um, uh, which application you decide to interact with um, based on what is important for you. But this is something new. We don't have this right now. Right now in the current world, what we have as a societal, let's say, asset uh, in terms of social media implications is very, very limited. We're yeah. limited to centralized organizations that can choose, and we know they do so, choose to sell their data. And some are a little bit more liberal than others or conservative than others. But at the end of the day, we really don't have that much of a choice. And yeah. with blockchain and with the mainnet, what we're going to have, and key to this, again, I'm not going to get in details about it, but is the tech behind it. In order to be able to offer this service to millions and millions of people, you need a very, very robust underlying tech. The vision that Brendan Bloomer and Dan Larimer have of being able to be the data, the, the standalone and premier pioneering database on the blockchain, that product that is able to replicate what you can do in a centralized system, but in a decentralized system, as quick, as fast, as powerful, really is key to that societal aspect of things that we want to create. We currently are not able to do so unless it's in a centralized system, but we are now seeing that we are capable of doing so using EOSIO technology. 
And so all of this plays together. It's really not an item in its own. It's, it's everything that meshes together to be able to offer you as an end user more choice, your choice. It's clear we are entering in a new internet of values and not only an internet of information. And uh, values means a lot of things. Values can mean uh, uh, societal, economical, technological. And if we can address the three uh, aspects, uh, I think we win. And the EOS ecosystem is exactly addressing that. Can you explain what's the reason? Uh, it's maybe uh, linked to all, already what we spoke. Uh, what is the reason why you 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 are uh, be, uh, be involved in this NFTs uh, space? Um, I guess the biggest reason why I'm so bullish and why I like it so much is I think it really struck a chord with the end user. A lot of this blockchain talk is very theoretical. We're talking about things that are to come. We're talking about partnerships that are coming. We're talking about use cases that are in the works. But as an end user, um, they're not, just not there yet. We're still working on, like I said earlier, we've put up the walls. We're now putting pictures. But I, you still don't have a pen in your hand. You're still not able to actually draw yourself. You're not able to reorganize those pictures the way you like them. But with the NFTs, we're getting a glimpse, I believe, for the first time of an actual use case mm -hmm. that goes down as deep as the very end user. Um, and that's why it gets me so excited about the NFTs is we've seen, and, and there's, there's data on this, we've seen how quickly these NFTs sell out, um, and we see the engagement with our user base. And so the Wax blockchain uh, definitely has, has made this a uh, priority. And we've seen that a lot of the movement in the NFT space has been there. And then we have uh, amazing teams like Simple Assets who made those available and made the, the underlying infrastructure, the foundations available at the very beginning. And then we see teams like the Pink Network who came up with the Atomic Hub, which then just further amplifies that and makes it even easier and really creates this whole NFT ecosystem, which then permits players like EOS Nation to be able to jump on board very, very easily. I really have to give a big shout out to the Pink Network uh, because the way that they've set up the Atomic Hub, it literally, it, it, it takes five seconds to create an NFT. And so we have our internal um, Stéphane Bisson who came up yeah, with a big shout out, a big shout out to Stéphane. Yeah, big shout out. Do you want maybe to add something? I really want to thank you, Patrick, because hosting events and webinars and, and series like these um, it really uh, is important for the ecosystem because you're able to reach out to a certain subset of individuals uh, on a continual basis and offer them educate an educational platform and educational content uh, where they can see themselves and where they can fit in. And really, you're very, very effective at that. So thank you very much for having me on and giving me the opportunity to be here with you. Very much for your time, Eve. That was a real pleasure. And uh, uh, until next time. Take care, Patrick. Bye. So I will let rolling out this video made by the Vigor team about the Vigor protocol tokens. There are two tokens, the VIG and the Vigor. One is for the utility inside the, the platform and the other one is for the governance. So that will be very well explained. Okay, you will find also all the relevant links into the mind map. So I will let rolling out this video. Vigor is a decentralized automated lending platform that allows community members to borrow, lend and save. The Vigor protocol is a two token system. VIG is the utility token of the VIGA protocol. VIG is used for features access, protocol fees, and rewards. Within the VIGA app, the VIG token can be used as collateral for a VIGA loan or added to the lending pool for VIGA rewards. Vigor is the low volatility token generated on the Vigor protocol. Vigor is designed to provide stability for a range of use cases from value preservation to market hedging. 
Within the Vega app, the Vega token can be used as collateral for a crypto loan or added to the lending and savings pools for Vega rewards. Generate Vega on the Vega app or give the Vega protocol a try on testnet with paper trading. So about X Nation, uh, there are not a lot of things to cover. Just uh, go back to the June 23rd. You will have a good explanation about how to use this uh, X Nation um, website. This is developed by EOS Nation. Shout out to Denis Carrier that is behind this development, and it is in collaboration with the Bancor Network. Shout out to Eyal Herzog. Uh, it's clear that X Nation is the tool by EOS Nation to use for the DeFi, for the decentralized finance. Uh, you can uh, swap from your uh, EOS to Ethereum uh, easily because there is this uh, BNT, that's the bank, that's the smart token of the Bancor network, it's the BNT. It's this intermediary token that lets you uh, swap. You go through the BNT. And you have liquidity pool on one side, a token on the other side, a token. And you can create your own liquidity pool on the X Nation uh, portal. Something that I want to show you, it's about the stable coin. You see, you have USD and a little S for stable. When you click that, you see all the tokens that are considered as stable coin. So you have the USN, it's a stable coin of the Dancor. Okay, I will put some links in the mind maps about that. You have the Vigor, Vigor. That's the stable coin provided by the platform Vigor and not the VIG because the VIG is for the governance. Remember, the Vigor is based on a DAC, Decentralized Autonomous Corporation. In this DAC, they are, they are custodian. Okay. Vigor is, uh, is still uh, in the very, very early stage. Okay. You will have in the mind map a branch about DeFi and you will have on this branch DeFi an ABC terminology that we use in the DeFi. Borrow, land, uh, derivatives, all this, this terminology of the finance that is now in decentralized finance because we have the chance to have the blockchain. So now I am with Stefan Bisson, one of the co-founders of EOS Nation. Welcome, Stefan. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks for having me today. So, uh, Stefan, I want to address with you the Wax Atomic Hub and the NFTs. That's a technology very uh, recent that we speak some uh, couple of months and that you include in your EOS Pod Source contests. What are the NFTs? Right. So what is an NFT? And to start, so we'll start by defining the letters. NFT stands for non-fungible token. So a fungible token is something that is identical one to another. Or for example, if I have two $5 bills, doesn't matter which one I give you, they're both identical, they have the same utility, and you can't really differentiate one from another. So same thing for Bitcoins or for, or for some EOS tokens. These are all tokens that are fungible. They're all the same. Non-fungible tokens means that each token is unique and has unique attributes and can be differentiated from the other NFTs. So what can we do with NFTs? So right now, um, on the WAX blockchain, which is based on EOSIO technology, uh, NFTs have gotten really popular in the last few months. 
and we have artists that are creating NFTs with their pieces of art. We have uh, collectibles that are being distributed as NFTs, kind of like uh, when we were younger, uh, some of us might have collected baseball cards, for example. Well, now these cards are as NFTs on the blockchain. And finally, um, a lot of people are also building games on top of NFTs or using NFTs as game items. So when I talk about uh, artists, you know, publishing their art on, on an NFT, a lot of people don't understand why people would want to do that. Why would I want to buy a token that I can see on my computer, right? But, but anyone can see that token. Anyone can go to my account and see which NFT I'm holding in my account. Um, so, so where the value comes from is, is basically the artistic intent. So what I mean by that is if we're in the real world and we have a famous uh, artist that does a, a painting, right? And, and someone else is able to make a replica of that painting. Well, the original, of course, has a lot more value than the re replica, even if visually, if you show them both to me, they're, they're all the same. I can't tell the difference, right? It's the same thing visually. I get the same visual benefit of, having, uh, of hanging a replica in my room uh, compared to a, paint, a real painting, right? However, the value of these two things are very different. And the real painting will have a lot of value because that painting has the artistic intent of the artist embedded within it. So the artist wanted to produce one of these paintings and that's the one that will contain the value, right? So these NFTs with, based on the blockchain where, where data cannot be manipulated, um, these NFTs that are created by the artist, they certify artistic intent because you can always check on the blockchain, hey, was this NFT really created by the artist that I want to support? Yes, that is recorded forever on the blockchain. All right. So that means to each NFT that an artist is producing, it's creating, there are some attributes that are attached to this NFT that are certifying that this NFT is unique to this creator. And if someone do the same picture, a duplicate, that would be not possible to counterfeit because there are these attributes attached with exactly. it. Exactly. So, so you could produce an NFT that looks like the real thing, but the, the, real, author, yeah. the creator on that NFT will not be the artist, the right? And so it's, it's impossible to create fraudulent NFTs, right? So whereas in the, in the, uh, the old school art world, frauds yeah. are rampant and it's a big problem, right? So it is a time stamping on the blockchain That's for right. arts, for yeah. assets arts or uh, whatever assets whatever you whatever you think of you can use yeah. it in whatever purpose you want to use it for perfect so uh, link it to that uh, how can someone create their own nfts exactly so so this platform here that i'm showing on the screen is the the atomic hub yeah. Um, and this platform allows anyone to easily create nfts that are based on the atomic uh, atomic asset NFT standard. Um, so, you know, you log in with your WAX account. These WAX accounts you can create for free through the WAX cloud wallet. Um, so that's used the WAX blockchain? If this is using the WAX blockchain, that's right. So we can okay. see here, I have my account here, steph.eosn on the WAX blockchain, and I've got 35 okay. WAX tokens in it. Mm -hmm. so, so I can hit, come here, click NFT creator, click create new collection, and then, you know, um, name it whatever I want, USIO workshop, for example, a display yeah. name, a, your collection description, you click here, you add the photo, and then it's very easy for, for you to create your own collection. And now you can have different attributes, different templates. We're not gonna get into the details today, but th when this platform was released, you know, I, I looked around, I, I found, I'm not, I don't have a technical background, so, you know, I, I don't know coding and all that stuff, but the, this platform is very easy for me to use and also able to create all these NFTs. Um, next question, Stefan. How, how is EOS Nation leverage, leveraging the NFTs? Great question. So, as I got more interested in the NFTs, as I played around on the platform, I figured, I think I'd like to create some to uh, augment, to, to promote our EOS Hot Sauce and to increase user engagement, increase social media engagement, uh, 
tied to our hot sauce. So, so what I did is I, uh, I created an, uh, a collection called EOS Hot Sauce. And I've also, and, and now, so we're creating these, these different NFTs every week and we're giving them away based on some, some drawings some contests that happened uh, on Twitter or in the live chat, mostly uh, on Sundays during the YouTube premiere. Exactly. So, and so every week we create five of these spicy rare NFTs. And uh, you see Daniel here that does some funny pictures for the, for the NFTs. And, mm -hmm. and you know they're they're awarded to the, our community members that are in the live chat, and yeah. we've also uh, built some prizes on top of that. So if you collect two of these spicy rares, well, then you'll get another NFT called uh, a hot sauce hero. And these hero NFTs are also come with some wax embedded in them. So when you burn this NFT, you can collect the wax back into your account. So and so in these examples you know these are there's 10 wax in, in them and then we have other ones for example this one has 400 wax backed into it so there's different prizes for, for different amounts of, of uh, nfts that our viewers collect and you know overall it, it's helped our social media engagement people are, are retweeting because we're giving away these nfts they're joining the live chat they're commenting and and it's just made uh make things more uh, engaging for everyone and the community uh, really enjoys it and you don't need to add wax and add monetary value to these NFTs a, a lot of people enjoy collecting them just because you know they look nice and, and they're, they're, they're fun to collect and you can trade them with others someone has another one oh hey I'll trade you my spicy rare 65 for spicy rare 69 okay you know. for this one so our attributes here there's a name attribute right spicy rare you have hot sauce 68 there's an image attribute so this yes. is a hash that links to the IPFS address. Yes. And then we have so, some, uh, some uh, integer, integer uh, you know, attributes, which are numbers. So we've got mm -hmm. spice level 11, a multi-chain factor. We, we talked about three different EOSIO networks in the Hot Sauce 68. Uh, the impact is how many uh, concurrent viewers we had during the live chat. So how many people were watching the show at the same time. So right now, these attributes don't do much. However, later on, we might create more promotion and, and based on these attributes, one spicy rare might do something, another might do another. Now, we're not, we're not too sure exactly how that's going to play out, but we have a lot of ideas and, and really the, our imagination is the only limit here. Yeah, and also, the fact that, uh, yeah, and also the fact that you have put uh, this uh, attribute, you can use uh, this attribute to do some uh, statistics uh, by uh, requesting the the wax uh, the wax blockchain exactly uh, exactly okay okay yeah, there's lots of things you can do here for sure. yeah so indeed to resume in uh, in my uh, understanding and also for the audience uh, you use this NFT to leveraging uh, EOS Nation hot sauce to yeah. give some uh, incentivizing for the community to follow you. Exactly. So we're, in, we're incentivizing social media engagement. Social med media engagement, exactly. Yeah. And it is giveaways, this NFT. So you give uh, some giveaways to your audience in this. That's right. So, these, so for example, these spicy rares, um, you can't buy them off us, right? We, we don't, we're not going to sell these. We, we're only making five a week and we're giving them to the people who show up in our live chat. So Say, uh, 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 attendee of your uh, hot sauce win this NFT of uh, Daniel Keys. Shout out to him with the Zorro mask. Yeah. Okay. And he, he win this NFT. Uh, he can so transfer this NFT to someone else. Yeah. Uh, he can do uh, make a price on this uh, a benefit on this. So, uh, so we've backed, we backed these NFTs yeah. with some wax equal to the spice level so we've backed this in uh, with eight wax now that's not worth much that's worth maybe uh four pennies or five pennies yeah, yeah right? it's yeah. not worth much but if you were to burn if the owner of this nfts prefers to have eight wax instead of this nft he can burn the nft and that wax will go into his account at the end of january are these uh, spicy rare promotions uh, the race for rares uh, as i call it we're going to give out prizes. And so if you have some of these NFTs in your account at the end of January, you'll have yes. a chance at winning some of these end of season prizes. So I recommend 
people don't yeah. trade them yet, hold them until the end of the season, and then maybe we'll announce other things. Um, you know, it, we're, we're not giving away big money here, but it, it is fun, and people do enjoy uh, trying to win them and collecting them. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see where it goes. We'll see where it goes. Are the most popular NFTs for right. you? Yeah. So, so I've been, I, I, I was bitten by the NFT bug, right? I, I started creating them. And then I started collecting them and trading them. And now I'm just super deep in the NFT rabbit hole. And, and so the, the, the recent two series that came out on Wax was uh, Blockchain Heroes and Cogs on Wax. So these are, are super interesting concepts. Just gonna, Martin is the one that creates the artwork or whatever. So he created the Golden Chili here where we award this Golden Chili to the best comment on our video every week, right? And it's just fun might win you some small prizes too if you're lucky yeah. Yeah. equate also a voucher yeah that's right so we, yeah. so we have these vouchers we give them away on sundays if you're in our live chat or our telegram group yeah. we'll share these links and then the first one to click the link gets to take the voucher and then we offer um premium accounts in exchange for these vouchers so if you show up a lot you accumulate three or six of these vouchers you could trade them and then trade them with us and then we'll create an account for you like dot eosn yeah. for example patrick dot eosn or whatever other name uh, you want that's not vulgar yeah thank you very much stefan for Great. your time as pleasure. always hopefully you learned something uh you know about nfts and um you know join in the collecting fun i'm, I'm having a blast collecting thank you stefan bye everyone bye So a little add-on to the Wax Atomic Hub uh, on the side of the login, how you can onboard into this Wax Atomic Hub. So the login options are the Wax Cloud Wallet. If you don't have any account, you can use to onboard on the Wax Atomic Hub by connecting your uh, uh, Google, uh, Facebook, your social okay and you onboard easily and you have a wax account created by the wax platform the wax blockchain just a wax account for you okay or let's say you have already a wax account and here you have two choice you can decide to uh, connect with the desktop encore wallet this is a very well experience or with scatter but I encourage you to connect if you can with the Encore wallet. That's very well done. So you click the Encore wallet and here you have to open the Encore application that will scan this QR code. So now I open my uh, Encore wallet and I just have to accept And I am in. I am connected with my account, NovaLTD.EOSN. So this account, it is an account available for uh, WAX, and it is also an account that I can use to access the EOS mainnet. And this account I have uh, put in the Encore desktop wallet, and you see, it is very easy to onboard. With Scatter, this is a little, little bit more complicated okay and uh, the desktop uh, encore wallet will integrate uh, the scatter very very soon so that will very will be very easy to 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 connect so already now it's not so so bad you you can uh, uh, log in as fast as we can with this um, Encore wallet okay so I am connected here okay you see I have my photo okay I have my photo here my profile so um, how was uh, working this how I was obtaining this uh, photo so I was going on a wax dot JJ and here I have choosing wax photo 
and here you can put your photo you have to connect with your scatter or with your uh, wax cloud wallet if you don't have any uh, any um, account and you choose your photo so now i have a photo you agree on the wax atomic hub you see this photo okay but going a little bit uh, behind the scene how it is made okay so we go on the explorer blogs.io on wax.blogs.io slash account because the blogs.io is available for you see a plenty of uh, of uh, blockchain so the eos mainnet the wax uh, boss uh, uh, etc etc and also test nets now i want to go on wax <clears throat> the best way to go on wax uh, block explorer blocks.io it's to do wax.blocks.io and slash account and here you put the account and by going in the documentation of wax i was seeing that the, the there is an account named wax.jj and this account As a smart contract behind remember an account can have a smart contract sometimes sometimes an account is just an account okay so here it's an account but with a smart contract behind so i click here on this tab and i have tables in this smart contract and there is a table named photos and here i am in the scope of this uh, table photo the scope is the name of the account indeed it's the smart contract wax.jj and now i give my account name to search nova ltd.eosn as lower bound and as upper bound i give also nova ltd.eosn refresh and you see he find my in this table photo that there is an account named novaltd.eosn and the photo and the photo is stored as a hash and this hash i will show you i i get this hash and now I put this hash in this URL. So https photo.wax.jj slash IPFS. So this URL, this server, photo.wax.jj slash IPFS, that's the IPFS node of WAX that manage all the, the resource uh, as a photo. Now let me show you something programmatically. So how to display a photo of your WAX account on your website using EOSJS. EOSJS, remember, it's the EOS JavaScript. If you go back to the June 23rd, there was an explanation on EOS JavaScript. The photos are stored using IPFS, which is a decentralized cloud storage technology, parenthesis, interplanetary file system. The photo hash necessary to locate the photo is stored on the WAX blockchain. Users submit their hash to the wax.jj account so the wax.jj account that contain a smart contract behind and this photo is saved exactly the, the hash ipfs of the photo is saved into the photo tables and the following eosjs code can be used to lock up the image 
of a WhatsApp. You see, we use the RPC procedure get table rows. Okay, we go in the smart contract account wax.jj. The scope is the name of the smart of the account. It is the smart contract indeed. Wax.jj. The table is named photo, and the lower bound here you enter your account name. In my case, Nova Ltd EOSN upper bound. I want to search only for my account. Okay. And if I receive in this variable something, there is the test here, if there is something, okay, that's return this URL, photo, wax, JJ, slash IPFS, and what is in this response, okay, in the field named photo hash, and photo hash is... Is this field here in this table? There is a field named photo hash. Okay, and it's exactly what say this code here. Go in the row, and this is the row zero because uh, you have exactly search for your record, Noval TD, uh, for your account. So you will receive in the field photo hash the hash of the photo. Otherwise, if you don't find he return a default image that he go search in a, repert a directory named image. Okay? Don't, so it's very easy to program something from your website, to integrate your website with the Wax Atomic Hub, do something a little bit uh, different with your uh, UI, you want to integrate something. You have the EOS JS. Huh? You have to install the EOS JS, it's clear, and that's give a, 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 a glimpse of all what is possible to do today with the interaction between a website and a blockchain using EOS JS. That's just an example, very um, basic. So, a follow-up about D-Web and uh, the, the last news on D-Web. If you go on a token page, okay, something new on the UI, on the user interface, that's the possibility to filter your post by the new post, the most upvoted, the recently upvoted, okay, very useful and also on the top here you have the possibility on your user profile uh, to do some settings notification settings to for the new post if you want to be informed by email if there are new posts on your message board if they are new comment on a post that on any post that you have made uh, when someone is upvoting a post, you you can receive a, um, an email. When someone is replying to to, to uh, any comment uh, on your uh, on your post, and if someone is replying in your thread, and if, if you were out upvoted. Okay, you were the owner of your banner for a moment, and someone else go uh, after you to, to vote your um, your post. He becomes the owner of the banner of the post. You will be informed. So that's the notification setting, and it is using uh, the email to to send an email to to your account. Okay, on the menu D Web Apps. You see, recently they have added projectivity, and it is using dweb.io, but it is a, a 
a place where you have projects and how it works on one side you have the project the project owner and the other side you have the contractors and if you are a project owner you go on this uh, on this uh, website that's my project uh, i will say my project page the name is nco hub the uh, you have an about page where you can uh, describe uh, what is your uh, your page and here you have a tab about projectivity where it is explained what is projectivity okay you have the project owner the project contractor and there is a telegram projectivity if you want to know more about projectivity you go on this link there is also in the decentralized message board there are two decentralized message board dplatform.network and insider tarasimonstudio.com okay the platform network it's for censorship resistant uh, freedom of speech uh, article about a little of all okay this is a melting pot uh, insider tarasimonstudio.com this is operated by EOS Nation, tarasimonstudio.com. You can create also a new board here, okay? And But you have already posts, and it's all about music. So, and there is a new decentralized message board that was just coming, is just stable. Just stable, okay, dot com. Also based on uh, dweb.io, and here it's to speak a message board for the discussion of any stable coin related topic and you have discussion for example on vigor okay defi protocol project vigor real finance okay very well done so that's several uh, domain several domain using uh, dweb.io as a as a framework as using the, the Bancor uh, network, the Bancor services provided by the Bancor network as a backbone for uh, D-Web, as the economical layer of D-Web, the DeFi layer of D-Web. Because you are your own exchange when you are on dweb.io, you are your own exchange, you have your own token. Remember, it is a no speculative token. It is a virtual token. It is not based on an exchange. It is all custodian behind the scene, managed by custodian. Last point, uh, the web will use some services of uh, liquid apps, DAP network. So they will use uh, liquid RAM, uh, liquid account, uh, liquid CPU for the resources. And for the hardware infrastructure layer of the web, they will use liquid storage and liquid Docker. Uh, regarding the, the statement of, uh, of uh, product manager uh, Eyal Herzog, okay, uh, he's the co-founder of the Bancor Network. He's also a product manager on, of the web, and he's also uh, one of the founder of Liquid uh, Liquid Apps. So it's clear. They have planned to use uh, the, some services of, uh, of uh, Liquid App Stop Network. Uh, it's very important because otherwise you cannot scale. You cannot scale on the side of the users and the resources, and you cannot scale on the side of your uh, hardware infrastructure layer. Here, it is still centralized. It's about the image, the, the YouTube video, when you had a YouTube video. All that is stored on the Google database Firebase. So the goal is to be decentralized. Uh, so using the Liquid Apps uh, DAP network middleware, DeepWeb will be able to, to decide as a provider, because it is uh, up to the, to the provider to, to decide what has to be shifted on the EOS mainnet or what has to be uh, kept onto the onto the platform okay which which part have to be on the eos mainnet here in this the web uh, that could be the, the economical value 
the DeFi value, because the EOS mainnet is exactly designed from the ground to be the deep, uh, a DeFi layer uh, for the EOS ecosystem, for the entire EOS ecosystem. That's one of the uh, goals of the EOS mainnet, this settlement layer, auditable layer, and also uh, identity authorization layer. So here in the web, what could be stored on the EOS mainnet? It's all about economical value. So, but the, the post, the comment, uh, all what you write, uh, all these mechanisms, uh, has not to be mandatory stored on the EOS mainnet. So by using the liquid app, DAP network middleware, uh, the web will uh, uh, balance the, 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 the framework correctly. Um, and they will decide uh, what should be or what should be not on the EOS mainnet. Hello, Benny. Hey, hey, Patrick, how are you? Uh, there is obvious question. Why did you create the DAP network? A good question. <laughs> um, I would say it all started from us uh, Myself and Tal, my partner and CTO, uh, partner in crime, we say, uh, we are developers. You know, we are coming from developer background and we uh, ran one of the top block producers of EOS, uh, Liquid EOS. And while doing so, uh, we were experimenting in different dApps and different uh, kind of uh, uh, applications that would be very useful for users, for end users. And uh, one of the earliest things Tal was trying to create is an airdrop mechanism. Um, and another one was a game. And he got stuck very early on, not because of his skill, skill set, obviously, but for the foundations, you know, the infrastructure that was not there yet. Uh, things like very, very scarce resources. RAM was very, very expensive. Uh, uh, CPU limit that doesn't allow you to do whatever you want and when you want it. Um, interoperability. So there you have issues to bring value from other chains to your chain. Um, a lot, a lot of things. And we thought about how can we solve this? Because in the infrastructure layer, it was not uh, uh, something that the, uh, the creator kind of thought of. You know, it was, it's kind of like a, a building straight on uh, RAM as a developer versus using your hard drive. Mm -hmm. Just as an example. Mm -hmm. um, and we started with VRAM. Uh, which uh, we created a patent, uh, currently it's patent pending, that takes the scarce resource called RAM on EOS and makes it kind of create a cash layer out of it without uh, uh, limiting you as a developer since nothing is going off chain. Everything is on chain. Uh, and that's where we understood that, wait, as developers, there is no one currently in the market that connects developers to the chain. They need to do this themselves. Uh, we started researching and we understood that 2017, 2018, you saw many projects with great developers leading them mm -hmm. and a lot of them died. And I don't think it's because they're uh, bad people or scammers, some were, but I think most of them died because the infrastructure was not there yet. Like they came with a vision. Yeah. I want to create the next social media. Um, and they couldn't. And not because of them, because this, the system didn't allow it yet. Um, and that's where DAP network comes in. All is on chain with the, the DAP network. All is, I, I will say also all is pro provable, right. all, all is verifi verifiable. Verifiable, exactly. Verifiable. 
on the EOS mainnet. Even though we're available not only on the EOS mainnet, but we'll probably get to that later. Yeah, yeah I, <laughs> I, I, I know what you, what you think about. Uh, now that we speak, the DAP network is able to, to, to connect with the EOS IO protocol and the EOS mainnet, but it will be all, also able to connect with other base base protocol. So, but for the moment, is, we speak about the EOS IO protocol and the EOS mainnet. But when you, let let me ask you, when you say that is connected with the EOS mainnet, uh, what is exactly uh, passed to the EOS mainnet from an EOS IO chain or EOS IO network? Uh, we started on the EOS mainnet, but we already expanded below, uh, 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 above that uh, and connected to all of the main EOS IO chains. Exactly. And when I say connected, actually the community is the one connecting, uh, connecting it and the DAP network only gives the tool set. So let's take WAX for example. Uh, the service providers that give the services on the DAP network are called DSPs, stand for DAP service provider. So if you are uh, uh, using uh, DAP services on WAX, uh, everything is available to you. All of the set of tools, oracles, VRAM, uh, a CPU, uh, but uh, uh, you get to choose what is transmitted to the main chain. Mm -hmm. What has to be transmitted is basically the usage because all of, all of the settlement layer with the DSPs happens on the EOS mainnet. So provisioning is happening on the mainnet, uh, but basically everything that the developer chooses can be extracted and uh, uh, sent to the mainnet, for example, if I have a bank, if I'm running a bank on WAX, and it's very important to me that all of the records will be on the EOS mainnet as well. So I can choose, in addition to the provisioning, I can choose to take every X amount of time, specific transactions and kind of push it on the mainnet so, someone, uh, so, so, that, so it will be on the history of the mainnet itself. Uh, so exactly. everything can be reconstructed, you know, from the... Yeah, yeah, that's very important, yeah. All can be uh, reverse engineering or uh, reversed to come to the, to, the, to the begin of the story. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Uh, the fact that you choose the EOS mainnet to, to store your proof uh, on-chain, uh, and it is... We know that the EOS mainnet is a public ledger. It is mm -hmm. permissionless. It is a public blockchain. That's something that is um, accountable to do that because... Uh, right. Uh, but I have to say that the developer can choose. Like the developer can choose to store uh, uh, the same transactions the mainnet, of the bank on a different yeah, chain. That's the beauty. That's I, the beauty. I, I, I really think that the power should be on the developer's hands at the exactly. end of the day. I can't choose exactly. for anyone, you know, uh, everything needs exactly. to be very flexible, everything needs to be plug and played. Um, and that's kind of what we think of. Uh, I think we have kind of a hacker's mentality in the company that allows us to deliver on this, you know. Yeah, we appreciate, uh, myself I appreciate, I think that we have a lot of to appreciate that because uh, you have this uh, agnostic mindset uh okay. at the base layer of your mind so that's uh, good. <laughs> um so that's let's come to the next question uh okay. how the dap network help to scale the eos ecosystem all right and beyond definitely yeah so i, I think i think some of it we touched already uh we have a set of services that any eos developer can choose to uh uh use. Uh, it, I think you can add the links to this uh, from here, but yeah. the list is yeah. very big. Oh, uh, it's big. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> whether it is uh, uh, things that people are more familiar with, which is VRAM, memory uh, solution, uh, vCPU, processing power solution, Oracle. Oracle. 
exactly, which is an Oracle solution, which does not limit you in the amount of pushes you can get in like other solutions. Um, and this is very important have, for the DeFi solutions. Definitely. I think, I, I think so myself. I don't want any limitations. Uh, again, with the bank example, uh, yeah. you need constant updates, but that's maybe for a different interview. Uh, yeah, I will, uh, for the audience, I will uh, put some links. Liquid Brains, this is something. I would like to give another word on. It's a way to transfer uh, a data and value, basically, in between EOS IO chains. Fantastic, yeah. Uh, not just uh, data about uh, currency, but uh, the real data. Real exactly. Data. I, I, see current, I see tokens and a sub, as a subset of data, right? Exactly. It's, it's a subset. So if you can transfer data, you can transfer anything. Uh, that's liquid brings. Liquid brings. That's liquid brings. But yeah. you have liquid link as well, which is a communication yeah. layer in between yeah. different chains, not EOSIO, but like EOSIO and Ethereum for like Other the major. protocol. Other protocol. Patrick, let, let me ask you a question. What happens if you combine liquid link and liquid brings? Oh, uh, for me, Liquid uh, brings its inside the EOS ecosystem to exchange data between EOS IO chains. Definitely. And the uh, Liquid Link is to exchange data between other chains that are running on other protocol. So exactly. like, like Ethereum, like uh, Bitcoin. But Bitcoin, we don't have a smart contract in Bitcoin, but we have a mini script. And mini script is a small language it's just to uh, solve a one use case, transfer money from A to B, from B to C. It doesn't, mean, it doesn't mean that it cannot be connected as well, though. That doesn't mean that it cannot be connected. Just for the currency, mine, uh, the currency data with Bitcoin, that would be only that. But with Ethereum, that would be to exchange uh, uh, data from a smart contract that is running on Ethereum in Solidity with a smart contract that is running on EOS IO. And vice versa. And vice versa. One of the things that I, I spoke of, I don't know if publicly, but think about how interesting it will be if you can take crypto keys, for example, oh. and migrate it to EOS. An example, you know, you can take yeah, NFTs yeah. from Ethereum and move it. Okay. And you know what? Ethereum is good for some things. Ethereum mm -hmm. has great liquidity, yeah. which projects need. So maybe take some things from EOS and migrate it to Ethereum, whether yeah. it is projects, like let's use any chains, and this is related to your question. Yeah. I think that the DAP network is universal. It's a universal second layer, it's agnostic. And the reason is I think interoperability is crucial for the next evolution of blockchain. Yeah. Um, and, and I think you should, we should combine each blockchain's advantages exactly. when developing. Yeah. The question, uh, and this is the final question, um, oh, unfortunately. <laughs> no worries. We'll uh, have another what, plan. Don't worry. <laughs> exactly. So uh, what role plays the liquid apps? Uh, in the Reddit challenge. There is a Reddit challenge currently, and can you explain what is the goal of this challenge? Or what is the stand of this challenge, where we are now, when it is finishing, uh, and uh, why, do, why, do you, why did you start this, uh, this um, challenge? That's the, um, that's the great question. The, actually, it started from the community. The community came, came to uh, the Liquid Apps group and said, listen, we have to uh, compete in the Reddit challenge. Mm -hmm. And it seems very fitting because uh, the Reddit, Reddit are on Ethereum. Okay, they chose Ethereum and said, we chose it, but we know it cannot scale. So we call upon everybody in the world to help us scale it uh, with no reward, by the way. Um, so we said, you know what? We do believe that the DAP network has the ability to win this. And we want the community to play a big part. Uh, so we created a bounty saying mm -hmm. that whoever wants to take the DAP network a set of tools mm -hmm. and the Reddit challenge uh, 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 requirements, yeah. combine them together mm -hmm. and create potentially the best uh, 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 scaling solution for Reddit today. 
Um, and they can do it however they want, okay? As long as they use the DAP network capabilities. And I'm very happy to say that uh, um, the DAP solutions team uh, yeah. managed to, uh, uh, to do it in time. Uh, yeah. it, shout, out, actually, shout out to them, shout out to definitely, them. Definitely, definitely uh, uh, their whole team, John, Jason, Ami, yeah. um, I, I know that they worked hard because it wasn't an easy challenge. Yeah. Um, we still didn't uh, look through uh, all of their code, but it seems like they did a good job uh, generally. And it's very it important. Is the, is it, is, it is to be shared now that we speak on the Kailin, uh, Kailin uh, testnet, I think, the, 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 the work of uh, the absolution. <laughs> I, I was uh, trying to, to, to have an eye on the code, but <laughs> uh, there is a lot of things to do. But uh, yeah, they, they cover a lot. They cover red. Uh, a lot of uh, services that we have in the in the DAP network. Amazing. And by the way, the, the way they did it doesn't have to be on the EOS mainnet because yeah. it really depends on Reddit at the end of the day which scaling solution they want. So as I said before, all about the developer, right? Yeah. Uh, Reddit in this sense is the developer, so we can choose whether it's going to be on there. They can choose EOS mainnet, WAX, their own chain maybe after liquid link is happening yeah. we can say that ethereum is on the eos ecosystem you know, every dsp on the liquid chain can run an ethereum node <clears throat> and right. actually run an ethereum chain the fact that interoperability leads us allows us kind of to to forget about this question sometimes and try to see how this all can be connected. Yeah, that's the point because we spoke a lot of at the beginning of the eco at the beginning of the EOS ecosystem. We try to define that we have sister chain, that we have side chain, uh, uh, and at the end of the day, that's EOS IO networks. All that, Definitely. all that is networks, and we have to connect these different networks together. Or beautiful, we have to connect all the all the ecosystems together, and uh, that's exactly Couldn't what. Couldn't agree want. more. If we have to, to define us as in one sentence, uh, you are connecting the the ecosystems, blockchain based ecosystem together. That's what you are. Uh, that's your. Uh, mission in this that's the vision that's the, the vision is to connect everything and i don't i i have to say we're not doing it alone i think the community has a and the largest part here right exactly exactly so now that we speak we have the boss uh network we have the the telos uh network we have the wax and um the eos mainnet in a way is also connected with the dap network that's the beauty and, uh, and now with the DAP solution uh, uh, bounty ending, the mm. Reddit, uh, uh, Ethereum. Fantastic. So and every, mm -hmm. every Ethereum DAP can actually take the Reddit scaling solution and exactly. do it itself, right? Amazing. And, and when it is finishing this, um, this uh, challenge, Reddit, what, when, when is the, the challenge? Uh, well, their be? challenge is uh, like somewhere at the end of the year i think okay. uh, but we will be uh, reviewing uh, the dap solution uh, uh, code cool. sooner than that mm -hmm. and uh, hopefully uh, we can you know when let the best men win uh, that in this case we have one group so i hope uh, they can win the prize i'm not a judge so i can say that <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, who is uh, where, uh, who is the judge of that uh, at the end of the, the tech team? The tech team is going to be full on. Tal is going to be one of them, yeah. and, and a few more people will review it. Uh, yeah. yeah. How many people are you? Indeed, uh, I know that you are. Uh, I, I, let me let me guess. <laughs> you are. Uh, yeah, it's clear. Benny, it's in the uh, in the liquid app. Tal, it's clear. Is the CTO. Uh, yeah. We have um, uh, Nathan. You have Nathan. Basically, Nathan. It's, it's, it's scattered across the world, uh, you know, in between uh, uh, us all. Uh, 
Nathan, that goal, Nathan. that goal, I forget it. <laughs> that goal was Nathan and Nat. And, and, and Eyal, and, Eyal also, in a way. Eyal is advisor and co-founder, you're right. Um, and uh, we have uh, uh, Kobe and Dudu, David, uh, and Nelly. Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty awesome, amazing team. And a, a part Back, of, of course. Yeah, exactly. A part of the team is in Israel, in Tel Aviv. It's, it's right. And uh, other peoples are um, decentralized. We're, di we're distributed, you know? Yeah, that's the goal of to be a company distributed. 2019 Liquid yeah. Apps. And you were a block producer at the beginning. Liquid Apps is, yeah, Liquidios is before that. Liquidios, and, Liquidios, yeah. Yeah, it was before that. And you, you leave the, the block production to focus, to, to focus uh, on the... On the DAP network fully, definitely. Yeah, this was the, the idea and I'm, I'm happy with it. I think uh, it, was a, it was a good decision because it made us uh, uh, have a lot more time dedicated to yeah. growing the network. And we can say that the, 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 the DAP network is not only a second layer on top of the EOS uh, ecosystem, uh, like the Lightning Network uh, on, on Bitcoin. Here it is not the point. It is uh, all about IBC uh, in and out of the ecosystem. And also to, to yeah, as we said, to connect all the, the all what we can connect indeed. And the, lower the price for the development, right? Yeah. So maybe that, what, what the, how it's possible uh, that the, the costs are so reduced uh, about the RAM or the C, but let's, let's, let's talk about the RAM. If you talk about the, the RAM, it's, it's basically, it's a very uh, uh, simple in a way mechanism and uh, we see this in cloud infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that uh, uh, some part, the RAM itself, is being used as cash. So, like Amazon or like uh, AWS and all this. Any, any, any cloud, yeah. Any even, cloud, even, yeah. Even internal cloud will use this. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, if we take our computer as an example, because I think this is more, some yeah, people yeah. know more. Uh, you have RAM and you have your hard drive. Okay, and if you say, if you store an image, it's being stored on the hard drive. But when you open it, when you double click the image, when you look at it and see it on the screen, it means that it's been copied temporarily to the RAM of the computer, mm -hmm. right? B basically, it's not, this is not really how it happens, but metaphorically. Yeah. Uh, and there the computer can see it easier yeah. And when you close the window, it's being deleted from the RAM because it's on the hard drive. Exactly. It's basically the same concept. We have the EOS RAM, which can be rewritable. You can write on it and delete and write on it on delete. So every DSP has a little bit of RAM mm -hmm. and it can use this in order to rewrite a lot of things in, with a very, very small amount. Exactly. Right? So with, with every little piece of RAM, we created an infinite amount of writes. Exact. And this makes it a lot cheaper. Uh, I know that Moonlighting, instead of, uh, how much was it? Instead of 2,000 a day, they, you, they, they paid $10 a day. Yeah, seeing that the, the RAM is, is the, 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 the limit, the, it's the limit. The, the limit, yeah, exactly. They have choose to me, they have just connect to the, to the, to the DAP network. The network. Uh, you cannot scale today without this second layer. Like yeah. you will need so much resources. Um, for example, EOS options say that they know that they're going to scale. Okay. They, yeah. They're saying we're going to scale. This is a, this is something we know that's going to happen. When we scale, we don't want to lose users because we are in congestion. So we need to, to construct our current software. Anticipate, anticipate. To exactly. Yeah. But no, because currently if they do it, they know it's going to take them like, I don't know, 10, 20% more of the time, even less. Maybe I'm just exaggerating upwards. 
to do it in a scalable way. Okay, let's assume it's not gonna take the same time, it's gonna give them another push. So they can do it from the beginning, and I think that's what they're doing. Uh, and for me, I think that it's a, it's a, it's a better approach, uh, but it really depends on what your end game is. Uh, they're looking for end users. End users do not have time to wait, right? They will choose another platform. They'll go to it. Um, if you're stuck and you're again, again stuck. If you're talking to developers, it's a different story because they have more, uh, 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 you know, they're more calm about this. They can wait. And oh. end users yes, will yes. not. And user cannot, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the point. And today as we speak, how many DSPs of you in the... I think more than 30. I saw stats yesterday, I think more than 30. Currently we see, uh, I think we see two, two main users okay. to uh, uh, the DAP network. We see developers that are using uh -huh. the services and we see people that rent their tokens to developers. Exactly. So the developers will use it. So these are the two uh, that we see. So uh, the, rental, the rental market are Qingdai and, and Block Starts that yeah. kind of uh, 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 give uh, uh, fees for the rental markets, you know, as you would. Um, yeah. And you have the developers that are staking. Exactly. And we can also uh, receive some DAP token if we are proxying the votes to the proxy for nation, the, the, the proxy. Uh, we well, receive. The proxy, yeah. Exactly. We receive some DAP uh, token uh, in uh, return uh, because we are uh, voicing, we are giving our uh, trust to the, to the proxy. Right. So there, there are a lot of incentivizing mechanisms for the, for the users. Uh, and also for the developers to 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 be with the DAP um, the DAP net that you are. And it's a very complex issue, I have to say. It's a, it's not an easy thing to understand. Uh, and to come to the real abstraction, the real easy way to understand in one sentence at the at the at the top of the pyramid, you need to have made all the stack to to understand. Uh, because if you don't have the the, the base layer until the top and you miss all the intermediaries, you don't have the, 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 the story. There, is, there are part of the story that, is, that are missing. So it's very important to, but we are here for that. And I hope we will have other interview, I think, in the future. Definitely. But for the stand that we are now, that's make no sense. Uh, I think the, this is also the reason I do each and every two months because uh, the EOS ecosystem is evolving at the peace uh, at a pace, a uh, very uh, uh, intensive pace, and um, yeah, but I, the, the future is bright. So thank Definitely. you very much, uh, Benny, for, thank you, you, Patrick. for your time, and uh, see you soon. Until next time. <laughs> Until next time. Bye. 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 Thank you. So this section about liquid apps is a little bit oriented for the developers. It's not a lot for the users, but let's give you a, a, a general overview. Let's dive a little bit into this website. So you see there is a section product. We have liquid accounts, liquid link, liquid oracle, liquid scheduler, VRAM, vCPU, okay? That's the, the most uh, well-known uh, services. There are other services, but let's uh, see, for example, VRAM, maximal storage space, minimal cost. So that's the, the, the way to use only the RAM needed when you are creating a smart contract dApps uh, onto the EOS ecosystem and you communicate only with the EOS mainnet when it is needed. Um, liquid account, seamless user onboarding. Okay, liquid link, liquid oracle is to access internet data from your DAP. You are developing a DAP, you need a price, 
coming from a website or different websites, you will use liquid oracles. So that's all. That's here uh, some services of liquid apps. Okay. Developer, the developer need the Zeus SDK, the Software Development Kit. When he want to create something on uh, the DAP network, he has to use the Zeus SDK, the Zeus IDE, Integrated Development Environment. So he has to use these these things. There is documentation. Uh, providers is how to become a DAP service provider on the DAP network. So on the DAP network, they are about uh, 30 uh, DSPs. Okay, it's growing, etc. etc. And the last menu is very interesting it's the documentation of liquid apps. And here you have a documentation uh, if you go on services and you have the services of the DAP network. Very well explained. Okay, I, this is very well crafted. So if you go back here, you see what is the DAP network. Huh? It's a live universal middleware of powerful services. So the services are liquid RAM, liquid CPU, liquid account. Okay, that's for the resources. You have uh, liquid brings. It's to exchange data between um, EOSIO network into the EOS ecosystem. For example, between WAX and between uh, another EOSIO network, let's say BOSS, okay, why not? Uh, you have Liquid uh, X, this is to, to link your EOSIO network with the DAP network, and you have Liquid Link, it's to go outside of the EOS ecosystem and communicate, for example, with Ethereum, or with um, uh, Bitcoin, with other blockchain protocol, uh, and in the both direction, okay, from the EOS ecosystem to another blockchain protocol, and from another blockchain protocol to the EOS ecosystem. Something to mention when I say the EOS ecosystem, I refer to the EOS mainnet at the core of this EOS ecosystem. The EOSIO networks that we have in this EOS ecosystem. And when you use the liquid link to communicate with another blockchain protocol and another smart contract, let's say you are communicating from your EOSIO networks uh, that you are building with uh, the Ethereum and with an Ethereum smart contract. By doing this, the Ethereum smart contract becomes part of the EOS ecosystem. That's the beauty that I want to say with that, that there is no more uh, borders. There are no more uh, excuses to, to communicate, to interoperate. So it's truly multi-chain. So the DAP network sits on top of base layer protocols. And it is the first universal middleware used across multiple blockchain. So you have the EOS blockchain, you have here it's uh, Cardano, here is uh, Ethereum, Bitcoin, Wax, uh, Litecoin, um, Tron, okay. It provides developers with a suite of powerful services which allow teams to accelerate their development milestone and deliver working products that solve real user problems. Okay. And it is very well recognized, you see. Why use the DAP network? It's about integrity, on-chain, incentivized, verifiable. Okay. 
for the speed, it's clear, sub-second speed, it's the 0.5 second, that is offered by the EOSIO open source software, it's clear. The, 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 the open source software of uh, block one. Scalability, uncapped storage and resources. That's the point, okay? You need an uncapped storage and enough resources. So you have to scale. Flexibility, customizable, easy deployment and, mi and migration. Okay? Interoperability, accessible across blockchains. Okay? And immortality, act resistant from front end to back end. Okay. That, if you want to know more as a developer, the Liquid Apps, you have to enter on this website. You have to, to begin your journey. Uh, there is also the Telegram of uh, Liquid Apps. That is uh, a, the place to go if you want to, to ask your question go on liquid apps telegram i will put all the links for sure so so dapaccount.com it's blockchain account for everyone it is developed by a team named block start and they are working in the DAP network, okay? So DAP, it's for DAP network account, okay? When you have an account created on this platform, you will be able to go on every um, EOSIO network that is linked with the DAP network through Liquid X because to to link a DAP, uh, Neo Sayo network with the DAP network, you have to use the LiquidX service provided by the DAP network. And Blockstar has created a solution DAP account. So it's to create an account, and after that, it is universal. You can go on every chain that is linked with the DAP network. That's basically the goal of that okay you see imagine a world where apps and token are accessed without complicated wallets and pace phrase where you can recover your account easily with your email best of all your keys never leave your device for new users this is blockchain accounts as they should be Exactly. To register in this DAP account is very easy. You give your phone number and then you will receive an, you will receive an email also with the with a with a code to enter in this website. And after that, that's okay. You will say, yeah, why I have to give my phone number, etc. etc. Here we are on the website, okay? If you are developing a solution with DAP account, because you are developing with the DAP network and you want to integrate easy onboarding for your user, you are a DAP solution provider, you are a, a, a DAP developer, and you want to work with the DAP network and you want to work with the DAP account, you can ask to the DAP account uh, to, to not uh, use a phone number. You can use the APIs provided by DAP account. DAP account is providing APIs where the phone number will not be used, for example. It's up to you. It's depend of the security that you want to offer for your application that you are developing as a developer. Okay? So that's the solution here, DAP account. Okay, the keys are stored locally with encryption. And this is non-custodial account. They are not controlling your, your, uh, your key, okay? 
your key never leave your device okay and it is integrated with the blockchain dApps okay I will put a link in the mind map, it's clear about DAP account. You will go into this uh, DAP account, you will understand very rapidly what it is. Here I am already logged in, and when I am logged in, I have a dashboard where I see with which email I was registered, I see my account name that I have obtained, and I have a balance of some DAP token because the token behind the DAP network provided by Liquid Apps is the DAP token. Okay, so I have my balance of EOS token and DAP token. I see all the history, what I have done. Okay, I can do transfer from a DAP account to a EOS account. I can send token. Okay. For example, here, I can choose, I want to send EOS to DAP, okay? I can do some uh, transfer, okay? And there is a send token, there is also a receive, a receive token, okay? You have just to wait a little bit that the, the interface is uh, refreshing. Transaction may take up to five minutes to, to reflect. May take, okay? Rewards, it's a page where you can see your balance, you can stake, let's say you want to stake DAP token, you can, OCM, we will come on that, EOS token, you can stake, you can unstake, there is an history, of what you have made, okay, very well done. And now you have the dApps, and into the dApp account, currently there is one dApps, named OCM, Organic Community Market. The OCM, it's about um, food, huh? uh, bio food, very well done food, uh, correct food, okay, for the for the organism, for the, for the wealth, and this OCM, it's one, it's the first DAP that is on the on the DAP account uh, with the DAP account integrated, so that use universal account. When the user onboard in the OCM, they onboard very easily with a, an account provided by DAP account. It's totally universal and. DAP account is using behind the scene the liquid account services provided by the DAP network. Okay? I don't want to go too much in the detail. That's to let you know that we have DAP solution providers that are working closely with the DAP network. DAP account is one. We have DAP solutions also. Shout out to them. They are also working with the DAP network. That's a very good experience. Okay, you will find all the link into the mind map about, about DAP account. So I am on Diffuse website. So we will speak about the Diffuse APIs. Okay. And it is a multi uh, blockchains uh, ecosystem that support the EOS ecosystem, that support Ethereum, that support Solana, that will support uh, different uh, protocol for sure. So Diffuse is uh, based in Canada. Uh, this is a company uh, managed by Alexandre Bourget. Shout out to Alexandre. Uh, yeah, this is. A solid team, a solid uh, tech people. Uh, they have created a lot of things for the EOS ecosystem. When the EOS mainnet was launched, they have created uh, a lot of tools that we use still today uh, to uh, querying the 
blockchain. Their stuff is to querying the blockchain in a secure way and a reliable way. Okay, you see this uh, schema here. Okay, you recognize the, 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 the EOS ecosystem, you recognize Ethereum, and you have Diffuse that make the, 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 the link with all that and the data. Okay, and you see here you have a smartphone with search. So they are covering the problem of the search. So here you have a nice schema infographic. And if you click here on search, that's explain you, that is to understand the past, filter through the entire history of the chain in seconds and receive just the transaction that matter the most to you. Okay, as a developer, you don't want to know maybe each little uh, micro forks or each little uh, change in the chain. You just want to focus on what, what is important for you. Okay, so that's the diffuse search. Life cycle, keep an eye on the present, navigate the tip of the chain as it grows, get notification and boost your confidence as the transactions that are important to you progress step by step through their life cycle okay here it's to be always informed when something change where something um, exactly to be notified stream listen to the future get notified in real time when something happens on the blockchain that you want to know about, never miss a bit. Exactly. So that's the, 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 the motto of Diffuse. They, they offer all these uh, APIs. Okay. If you go a little bit more in the detail, you see here, for example, the co-founder of the Karma application, Dallas Rushing, is stating using the diffuse api we were able to switch from eos so the eos mainnet to wax because the the karma is working with uh, the karma uh, decentralized application is now on wax almost instantly without the need to refactor our backend they offered exceptional support from the get-go which was a game change for us Okay, Dallas Rushing. Everypedia, director and software of Everypedia, Kedar Liar. By switching to diffuse GraphQL subscription query. So GraphQL is a language to querying the, the, the blockchain and provided by diffuse. We got rid of half our sync code, a whole server used for caching synced data, and we cut our database size by 90% for the storage action history. This is a huge time and money saving for us. So what is explaining here? It's that all the transaction all the history of the mainnet because Everypedia is on top of the EOS mainnet. They were storing the entire history and now that they are using the GraphQL subscription, subscription query, they, they have uh, cut half their, uh, their code to synchronize and an entire server that was used to caching the synced data. So all this stuff that they were um, subject to do before, it's now finished because they are using these APIs. That's the beauty. Or oh, you will have link to the website. You will have link to the different uh, 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 APIs: Diffuse Search, Diffuse uh, GraphQL, etc., etc. Okay. And the nice video made by uh, Alexandre Bourget 
explaining uh, what is uh, diffuse. Okay, he, he explained that better than me. Uh, I don't want to to explain all, but that's the the, the place to go. Okay, diffuse. Uh, liquid apps with the DAP network. This is a nice combo to to use, okay? Because remember the EOS uh, ecosystem, the uh, the EOS um, mainnet is implementing an operating system. It's emulating an operating system, and if you program directly in front of of the operating system, you will be a little bit crazy as a developer it's better when you use abstract layer and diffuse api is an abstract layer uh, liquid apps that network is an abstract layer also to reduce the cost huh? so nice combo nice combo Hi, Sebastian. It's a real pleasure to be with you today. Nice to be with you. Thanks for having me, Patrick. So, as is a WordProof company and its main product plugin that you have developed for WordPress, that is Named WordProof. So, I will tell a bit about the problem space we're solving because the, the thing is, the internet as we know it is fundamentally broken. 29% of all the people in and around Europe, and Swiss too, I guess, are suspicious of the internet. And 86% have fallen for fake news at least once. At least that's what they know. And what we think and say is that the internet needs a layer of trust. So that what I read is real and that I can verify who wrote it, what I create, that I can protect it, that it's mine, and that I have to prove and in disputes, for example, in e-commerce, that I can prove what my situation was what were the terms product terms terms and conditions at moment of buying wordproof aims to be that layer of trust and what we say is the internet the current internet is broken and what we need is the trusted web and on the trusted web all information is time stamped and maybe even an identity connected to it so the web shop adds their identity to the product information. The uh, journalists or the publisher connects the identity of the journalist or the publisher or both to the news information. So uh, that's how we envision the world and Brandon Bloomer, the CEO of Block One, said once a few years ago, in five years from now, if you don't timestamp your information, you'll be considered to fraud. What are you hiding? And what we do with WordProof is exactly the time stamping of information. So we started with a WordPress plugin. WordPress does 38% uh, of the web. Uh, we recently uh, participated in a competition from the European Commission. Uh, the competition was called Blockchains for Social Good. 175 uh, participants from more than 40 countries uh, participated and we were the absolute number one because Europe thought, the European Commission said, this is a solution to a very, very big problem that impacts all of us. So uh, that's an introduction in WordProof. Um, you can do it for publishers, for e-commerce, for, um, for copyright protection, and even, and that's one of the most interesting use cases, if you ask me, for search engine optimization. Because you can prove to a reader that you didn't tamper with information, but also to search engines. Question on, on uh, the, the WordProof plugin. Yeah. Uh, this is running on, if I am not wrong, uh, it is running on the EOS mainnet. Yeah. Provided by the EOS IO open source software. Yeah. And also on the Telos network. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Have you ordered a, a, a EOS IO based network? Yeah, and the, the, the nice thing is we will roll out to more blockchains. With Talos, we have a special relationship because we were one of the first, uh, they call it a worker proposal system. So we got a, a bit of funding to get the project started uh, more than, what was it? One and a half year ago. So uh, we launched on EOS and on Talos. We also got an EOS grant from Block One. So they're both supporters of the product. 
What we will soon do is roll out to Ethereum as well. That's still Whoa. a secret. Don't tell anyone. Uh, <laughs> and maybe even before the end of the year uh, with Bitcoin. Because what do we say? As a company, we are blockchain agnostic. What yeah. means that to get the broadest adoption by search engines, social media, hundreds of millions of people around the world, billions of people, we need to be blockchain agnostic. We can't make the decision for them. So uh, you can timestamp with WordProof on different blockchains. By now it's EOS and Telos. Soon it will be um, uh, Ethereum as well. That's good that you say that because uh, that fits very well with the, the trend. We have to be multi-chain, but not only in the EOS ecosystem, but also with other protocol. Oh, and what, what, what I can say, because it's the EOSIO Swiss workshop. Hello, all participants. Why did we choose EOSIO to start with? That's an interesting question. Shall I answer that one? Uh, the reason is clear. It's because we want to address multi-chain, multi-ecosystem. And yeah. with the EOSIO open source software, you have like a glue you can address a lot of other ecosystem yeah and also because the the the, um, the block time that is very uh fast yeah uh, uh, 0.5 second alpha second it's very interesting and also the the lib the last irreversible block yeah so we know that the, on the us mainnet we have three minutes uh on a boss boss uh blockchain we have three seconds yeah so I, I, it is in the plan of block one to, to, to ensure that the uh, block confirmation, so the last yeah. irreversible block, will be also, hope, hope, zero Three seconds. Yeah, exactly. No, but, so, but what I can say, because for us, uh, the reason you said the half second block time, that's really important for publishers. Mm -hmm. A second thing is that we can stake tokens on behalf of the end user, so it's really easy for them to timestamp with us. Another reason is that delegated proof of stake uses in the EOS case, it was around the time we wrote the proposal for the European Commission, it was 55,000 times less energy consumption, so it's better for the planet. Um, and there's an advanced permission system in EOSIO, which makes that we can stem on behalf of the end user. We couldn't have built WordProof as easy as it is today without those things. So that's why we chose uh, EOSIO to start with. So that's maybe interesting info for- Very the interesting. And the fact that you are uh, agnostic in your mind as a other guest on our show, uh, other people in the community as a whole, uh, the, the EOS uh, community, the EOS ecosystem community, uh, it's something very great because we have to address other protocol, uh, leverage those protocol like yeah. Ethereum and Bitcoin. Very nice. Uh, so the, 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 the CMS, so the content management system yeah. that we can address with the WordProof plugin is the WordPress. Myself, yeah. I have a WordPress website for the community in Switzerland, and I'm at yeah. eosblockchainswitzerland.ch. Uh, each page is timestamped time with the, the, the plugin. Yeah. Uh, it's very easy to use indeed. Uh, I will explain that to the audience. I will put some uh, document on that. And you will uh, support, I think, or you are in progress maybe also, to, to support other content management system. Can you yeah. maybe... Um, explain a bit about that? Yeah, for sure. So we started with WordPress because I work with WordPress for almost 14 years now. I'm part of the WordPress ecosystem for years. I organized events. I was a keynote speaker for 2,500 developers last year uh, when we were still able to do events. Um, so I'm deeply rooted in the WordPress, uh, WordPress ecosystem. That yeah. helps us in the distribution and WordPress is big. It's 38% of the web. The number two uh, market share is around, my guess is 5%, that's Shopify. Shopify is a big e-commerce platform, really grow hard during the COVID times. So we will roll out to Shopify in a semi nearby future. Uh, we have bounties available for a Drupal development party, uh, soon maybe for a, a Joomla development party to make sure that uh, WordProof is also available to those systems. 
it is already available via the API. So we address 100% of the internet via our API, 38% via WordPress, soon five, five, six other percentage via uh, Shopify and all the parties under that. So we really want to bring WordPress proof to all app stores, to all plugin repositories, because timestamping is a human right. It's impossible that it's available everywhere. Okay, so when we use the standard work proof plugin, we are timestamping on the EOS uh, mainnet, right? Currently, yes, yeah. Yeah, and we can use also this work proof plugin, uh, not as a standalone uh, uh, product, but we can also use as an API. There are APIs that we can use. Yeah, so for example, if you don't use WordPress, you can reach out to us and we have some API documentation and you can implement it as well there. But okay. we're, we're planning to make it easier with uh, apps and plugins and modules for every content management system in the world, for both publishers as web shops. So you will be multi-blockchain and protocol, uh, you will support multi-blockchain and protocol. Yeah you will support multi-content uh, management system. Yeah, and we will support both governments, social media, and search engines to implement it. So we are a marketplace on three sites uh, because adoption from everyone is needed. Exactly. And, and also something that I say uh, since, uh, some, since uh, a couple of workshops, we have to be also to address the social the technological and the economical uh, layer. And if you can do that with the EOS ecosystem, you win because yeah. you address all the, the layers. So um, now I know that you are very focused also on the SEO. So the started with explaining uh, what WordProof is with the problem space in um, I, I can tell some things on problems in search engines currently and how we fix them. So for a search engine, if you're a blogger and you just change the date of an article, you rank a bit higher in the search engine. That's not totally fair, but that still happens. If you do it, you have an advantage for a few days, but if you don't do it and your competitor does it, then you have a disadvantage. Is Google able to solve that currently not if they were able to solve it they would already have done that so that's a problem with the uh with with just the date it's a small type of fraud then we have duplicated content people are republishing content sometimes with permission sometimes without permission that's yeah. called duplicated content but what happens if there's a small website publishing information then a big website copies it then mm -hmm. google indexes the big website and the small gets the penalty hey you're copying the big website well because the search engine didn't check out the small website before with timestamps you can explain not only to people but also to search engines to uh, hey this was the exact date it was published this was uh, the first one who published it so you can prove that you were the first one who published it um, and another thing is with authorship. So Google uh, launched their, uh, what was it? The uh, Google Plus and platforms like that to make sure that you can claim as an author the information you have. Blockchain identity, and many people are working on that, will be the indisputable place to make sure that with a timestamp, you make it transparent and with blockchain identity, you can take accountability. So, um, to make sure that not only people can read the information, but also search engines, you need to talk in the language of a search engine. So um, there's a, a language, it exists for over, I, I guess, around 10 years now, and it's called schema.org. With schema.org, you can tell to a search engine that Patrick is not just a word, but it's your first name. Sebastian is not just a word, but the first name. Exactly. Wordproof is not just a word, but the company where Sebastian works. So with schema.org, you can tell information to search engines. What we do is we work together with people at Yoast. Anyone who knows uh, WordPress knows Yoast. Uh, yeah. They are a SEO search engine uh, plugin running on over 11 million uh, websites. They did the schema.org implementation for those 11 million websites. Together with those people, we 
define how those open source timestamps will be part of schema.org. So uh, that has the highest chance of adoption. And then a relevant yeah, question exactly. is, do search engines already use the timestamps? It's hard to say because search engines will never be transparent about that. But once they do recognize it, it makes sense that you timestamp early, that you timestamp today already, because it will be backwards compatible. If they see in one year that you timestamped it today, they can still put value on it because it's the blockchain, it's indisputable. So timestamping today really matters. Also okay. from the perspective of search engines. Fantastic. Um, do you consider, uh, we, say, we said earlier you are multi-chain, and uh, EOS, EOS ecosystem, multi-chain, uh, multi-chain protocol, so Ethereum, Bitcoin, and now we speak, we spoke about CMS, you are also multi-CMS, and on the search engine side, you are very focused on uh, Google, but it's clear that Google has the, is the, <laughs> the, 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 has all the market of the, of the search, search engine, uh, do you consider other other search engine? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, one that I really like to uh, collaborate with is actually there are many, but the one who really has a, a core belief about privacy is DuckDuckGo. Yeah. So I really want to team up with them for them to be one of the first who are able to use it. Then there are some search engines in the blockchain space. I know about presearch.io. Uh, so we're talking to the guys there with the guys where it's just getting to know each other. Maybe we can do something together. I want to have Bing, the Microsoft search engine. Bing, uh, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But Google is strategically a really important one with the people at Yoast. We're really close yeah. to the people at Google. Uh, but also the, uh, the DuckDuckGo, we haven't reached out to them, but we will do soon. And uh, because there's really a core values that we share. So it will be really interesting to see uh, how we can team up with them. It's, it's the best way to grow. And especially, for example, if you want adoption by search engines, if you want uh, governments to make it mandatory to timestamp terms and conditions and product terms, yeah. then... It, agnosticity in both platforms as blockchains, it's, it's necessary. Uh, we have the DAP network on top of the EOS ecosystem and this yeah. DAP network is, uh, was created for a lot of reasons. First reason was about the resource RAM yeah. that we use a lot when we are a developer or DAP solution provider, when we have a smart contract. Uh, also, to have a better abstraction when we are developing and also to uh, be able to address a number of users and number of uh, workload that is going maybe uh, increase up, 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 up. exponentially <laughs> when, when we see the, 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 the facts of uh, work proof, you are uh, growing very fast. So what could be the, the benefit, the real benefit for you to connect your uh, workproof uh, and and chain that uh, where are uh, time stamped the, the events yeah uh, with the dapnet oh scaling is really important um, to and what I think my humble opinion is that time stamping will be the case for mass adoption because time stamping brings benefits to all. It's exactly. easy to understand use case. And in 1991, blockchain was invented, not for Bitcoin, but for time stamping. Scott Sternetta and Stuart Haber. Exactly. I was totally uh, mind, uh, uh, wondered when I was uh, hearing that, that the blockchain was already uh, begun uh, before 2008. <laughs> and, yeah, and uh, in the... For the use case of the time stamping, it's clear that you, you, you name it, it's uh, mass adoption. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. For you, the DAP network is something that you are envision, that you envision, yeah. Yeah, 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 because um, we are in touch with the guys, with Zach Gall uh, for, for uh, almost a year, I guess. Uh, they covered with everything else the, uh, the project, and we're in touch with them. We're in, uh, in a chat with uh, Tal and Benny, and uh, yeah, it's, it's great work that all the guys uh, and girls, I, I hope, I'm not sure. If, 
are there girls on the team? But there um, is a girl, yeah. yeah. As it should be. Uh, maybe there are many. I don't know. <laughs> perfect. But no, no, no. Uh, they are. Uh, well, they are a great team working on the scalability and uh, yeah keep up the great work and i heard that uh it, for me it's such an honor that benny is speaking after me today so uh, say hi to him yeah for sure so there is a good uh, fit in all these uh, guests uh, today because we have uh, like a story to 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 explain to our audience and uh, maybe you can put some links for for us yeah. about yoast uh and uh, the seo um work that you can uh share if you can yeah uh, that we can share that and, and maybe a good to know because one of the important things we are working on is education make sure that end users governments search engines and mm -hmm. the people with websites know what the trusted web how it works and stuff like that so what we are doing is launching the work Proof Academy and it has videos. One video is about what is hashing, how does it work? Another video will be about what's the difference between a blockchain and a database. Another one will be about search engine optimization. Yeah, um, nice. So exactly how it works. So I will add a link to the WordProof Academy. People oh. can join it. It's totally free. It will always be free. I'll put that link uh, on the site as well. So yeah, and I will share that on my on our uh, educational platform, EOS Blockchain Switzerland.ch. I Perfect. will add a link to the WordProof Academy. Perfect. You, you do a, a big work on educate. It's uh, important about timestamping, hashing, what is the difference, and blockchain database. Yeah, uh, it's very very well done. So thanks. Uh, what you do maybe some something that you want to add to to the discussion now maybe uh, oh no yeah the, the wordproof academy is interesting and to all the watchers it's super super good that you're following this workshop thank you patrick for organizing this it's important work um if you want to try wordproof just go to the website it's free to get started and if you have questions please reach out on uh, telegram or uh, th that's t.me slash wordproof it's um wordproof io on twitter it's uh, me is the lance d-a-l-a-n-s on twitter i'll add that uh, for the links as well and uh, it was a pleasure to be part of your show uh, patrick very, very nice uh, uh, sebastian it's uh, thank you to have accepted to do to, to that I know that you have a lot of things to do and uh, it's a real pleasure. Happy so, to contribute. Thank Thanks. Thank you. And thank you. So we have covered a lot during uh, this workshop today with our guests. Shout out to Yves Larose, shout out to Benny Akak and shout out to Sebastian van der Lans that have accepted to join this EOSIO Swiss workshop version number three okay so uh, the next workshop is planned for october 23 register in your agenda october 23 something new that will come it's the atomic hub wax atomic hub for eos blockchain switzerland uh, i will have some nfts I will uh, publish that very, very soon, okay? And also, you can join me on voice, abp.voice.com, and you search for uh, Nova Crypto. I will put the link into the mind map. You can also find us, it's clear, in Telegram, in uh, Twitter, in YouTube, we have a channel YouTube that is growing. So I thank you very much to have attend to this uh, EOSIO Swiss workshop number three. And I see you on October 23. Until next time. Bye.